recently I was very, very sick and in the hospital and I was diagnosed with sepsis, which was caused by a microorganism called Candida parapsilosis. Now this microorganism caused an infection in my brain. Many people, since that video has been released, have had a question. How did I get a fungal infection in my brain? And also, what is Candida parapsilosis? So let me answer those questions for you. First, what is Candida parapsilosis? Perhaps you have heard of Candida in the news, maybe in health magazines, but primarily the Candida they usually talk about is Candida albicans. Candida albicans is much more common. It's commonly found on the human hands in the gastrointestinal tract. And now a lot of people are starting to be diagnosed with a medical condition called small intestinal fungal overgrowth. This is caused usually by Candida albicans. I have a different species. It's called Candida parasolosis. Candida parapsilosis is primarily a healthcare acquired infection. However, it is found in other places such as in the soil and also in some domestic animals. Primarily, the biggest source of infection is from healthcare workers' hands. Candida parapsilosis can attach to your hands, and if you don't have good hand hygiene, the person can pass it from person to person. This can cause a lot of serious illness, especially in people who have catheters, such as urinary catheters, pick lines, Hickman's, any sort of indwelling device. However, if you're not in the healthcare setting, it is not very likely you'll get a candida parapsilosis infection. Your skin does a very good job of keeping the microorganism out of your bloodstream. However, if you do have an indwelling catheter device, such as perhaps a central venous line or perhaps a urinary catheter, these can be sources of infection. If you have a home health nurse come and visit you and they don't practice very good hygiene, with that all said, you might say, well, how did you get an infection and an infection in your brain? So Candida parapsilosis has a giant love affair with total parenteral nutrition, which is often called TPN, often abbreviated IV nutrition. IV nutrition is a rich source of sugar. Candida parasolosis loves sugar and specifically it just loves TPN. It loves that IV nutrition. Mm -mm -mm. It just loves it so, so much. When the TPN is being prepared, it should be prepared in a completely sterile environment. However, things can go astray since Candida parasolosis can be on healthcare workers' hands. It is possible that Candida parasolosis can be cross-contaminated into the TPN. Perhaps you don't always have the cleanest hands and then when you put on gloves or putting on your sterile gown, you can perhaps contaminate it with anything that's on your hands. With Candida parasolosis having a giant love affair with TPN, it only takes a very, very small amount of the Candida parasolosis to come in contact with a TPN and then it is happy and it is starting to have a little party in the TPN. Now usually the TPN is refrigerated. The refrigeration helps slow down the replication of anything that could possibly contaminate the TPN. With that being said, once the TPN is infused into the body, hopefully there's not a lot of the Candida parapsilosis and it doesn't cause much of an infection. Your body's able to get rid of it. So many people, when they infuse their TPN, they do it over a short time frame, either four hours, six hours, eight hours. I, however, do it over a long course. I do it over 20 hours. The TPN warms up to room temperature and it just takes a very long time to infuse into my body. This allows the Candida parapsilosis to start replicating and to start having more fun with the TPN. Also with a slow rate of infusion, it is just very slowly being introduced into my body. It's just very slowly setting up shop and the place where they believe it set up shop was in my brain. It was just slowly coming there. It didn't take a lot of candida parapsilosis, just a small amount. It started a tiny infection in my brain and because I'm on TPN and I use it almost every single day, every time I got the TPN, the candida was being fed by the TPN and it kept growing 
and growing and growing. And it was just a small little infection and it just kept going little by little by little and just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And they believe it took about three months for the infection to become as big as it would, what it became. After three months, the infection was absolutely horrible. I was having terrible headaches. My, my medical team did not know what was wrong with me. I do have headaches from mitochondrial disease. They thought perhaps my mitochondrial disease was getting worse. They thought the increase in fatigue and the dizziness I was having, perhaps it was just a worsening of my mitochondrial disease. So everybody kind of brushed it off and there was no reason to be concerned because this infection was not causing an increase in my total white blood cell count. They just thought, well, we're not really sure why this is happening. We're sorry you're not feeling so well. Maybe you caught a virus. We're not really sure. But the infection was growing and growing and growing until finally, finally it became so big, it started to leach out into my bloodstream, cause a bloodstream infection, which is called sepsis. So that was kind of a good thing that it did that because once it was causing sepsis and it was in my blood, they were able to do blood cultures and find out it was candida parasolosis. Once they found that out, they were able to get me on an antifungal and start to get me on the path to hopefully better health. Now, even with all that said, being on the right medicine, this infection is very, very hard to treat with it being in my brain. It's gone down into the sulci. It's gone down into the deep recesses of my brain. It is really deep seated and it's going to take a very, very long time to get rid of this infection. They believe it's going to probably take about five, maybe six months or even longer to get rid of the infection. One thing to know about, about fungus, fungi, is it's very slow to grow and it's very hard to kill. So once you have a fungal infection, you just do not get rid of it overnight. It is a very slow, tedious process. You just kill it little by little by little. And because it's in my brain and it's in all these different recesses in my brain, it's going to take a lot to get into all those recesses to completely eradicate the fungus. And they're hoping and praying that it does completely eradicate because if not, I could potentially have this fungal infection for the rest of my life. Oof, that's a lot to think about. So that's just a little bit about candida paracelosis, what it is, why I have this infection in my brain, the potential cause of it, which they believe it's my TPN, and the very long course to getting on the path to full, complete treatment and resolution of this infection. So thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. Please also remember to comment and share. It really helps my YouTube channel. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.